being super woods in the day being super woods in the day <laughs> wow all right we're out in the woods today showing you how i film with very little gear but to show you how i film with very little gear i had to bring more gear <laughs> so it's a kind of a meta day out in the woods i'm basically filming myself filming Back to filming. Oh, can y'all even see me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've been itching to actually make this video on my channel for a while because I've really noticed that my cinematography has gotten a lot better on this channel, even over the past like year and a half. But subsequently, as my cinematography has gotten better, my gear has decreased a lot when creating these videos. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that I'm wiser now, you know, things that are interesting to me or new gear that comes up, I ask myself the right questions, um, thinking about things in terms of, okay, if I buy this piece of gear, when will I use it? Like, will I be able to immediately use it and see a definite impact from using it tomorrow? Or is it just neat and I just wanna try it? <laughs> Also, something else that I've noticed as a creative director and producer, some of the best cinematographers I've worked with, they know how to do a lot with very, very little. A lot of the work that I do with the production company is very straightforward, really practical lighting. And so you end up hiring a cinematographer for their eye and for their capabilities and less about what equipment they're actually using. And that's kind of the camp I want to live in, especially because in most documentary settings, you don't want your subjects to really pay attention to the camera. You want them to kind of forget that it's there. And even here on this YouTube channel, I'll have people stop by and people jump in. Um, trying to create an environment that feels very comfortable so people forget about the camera is really important to me. Some of the best compliments I've gotten from clients are, wow, this was the easiest interview I've ever done for my business or my entity or my organization or whatever it is. Or when they say things like, oh, I didn't even realize you were still here filming by the end of the day. That's like the best compliment I can ever get as a video producer, creative director for the company because that means that I really got them comfortable with the camera, with lights, and part of that is about having very minimal gear. And also part of that is about making sure that because they're so comfortable, they're able to give a more authentic interview. They're able to show and tell their most authentic self. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you everything that I keep in my camera bag when I'm out in the world sort of running and gunning, all of my immediate gear for making YouTube videos. And the hope behind that is you will see that you don't actually really need that much to tell a great story and or if you're thinking about re-upping or upgrading your gear then maybe you can look, see this and you know make some sort of strategic purchases rather than going ham into it and buying a whole bunch of stuff that you don't actually need. So first off, I use the Wanderit Provoke 21 liter, hashtag not spawn on that, but I've used this backpack for the last year or so, and I really like it for a few reasons. One, it's got a really flat and sleek design, which really helps for me. I am a petite person, and so backpacks that are really big and bulky and like wide uh, really mess with my center of gravity and I can't really wear them for too long because I'm so small. Two, it's a really minimal bag and I really like that because it forces me to think critically about what I'm bringing. So in regards to the actual gear I use to film, this is it. Sure, I do have other lenses, of course. Again, I work with clients and sometimes things, you need other things. But for the most part, this is all I use to make the bulk of the videos that you see here on YouTube, for sure. I use the Sony a7 III, mostly because of the awesome battery life. Also, the bulk of my filming, I just have two lenses. I use the 17 to 28 millimeter f2.8 Tamron and its sister lens, the 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 Tamron as well. Like I said, I shoot most of my videos with the a7 III and my two lenses, uh, but to film myself filming, I brought my B camera, which is the a6500 with the Rode Video Micro, the little guy. One day I would like to have just two a7 III's just so I'm super matchy matchy, but 
The A6500 is a really awesome camera. It's just the battery life is like terrible on that thing. So yeah, something I will say is uh, my last sort of super, I was trying to be cinematic vlog uh, where I talked about my 2019 and everything I had gone through. I filmed out here in the woods then too. And again, I really, this is all I use. So I'm kind of trying to like recreate some of these shots out here again uh, in a different outfit. So you know, I really am doing it. <laughs> the biggest thing when you're shooting alone to have a sort of like dynamic look and feel is to combine a lot of stagnant shots with moving shots. So you'll notice in that video that I figured out a way to film myself walking. In the stagnant shots, you'll notice that I start out wide and then I go medium and then close up, you know? So think about, like actually figure out your shot list before you start filming so that way you don't need to bring that much gear and then you're really succinct with your time, which is really big if you're trying to be consistent on YouTube. I really love these two lenses combined together because with them, you essentially have wide, medium, close up between the two lenses. So that helps you to have a variety of different shots very easily. My one piece of advice, if you're starting to invest in your glass, as they say, and be super snazzy with it, is invest in a clear UV filter for all your more expensive lenses, at least for sure. It's just, you are inevitably going to come very close to dropping your lens or dropping your lens or come very close to dropping your camera or dropping your camera and so, Putting that extra little protection on your lens, I think is worth it, especially if you end up spending 800, 900, couple thousand dollars for your lens, stretch it even further, spend that extra 65, 70 bucks and get that clear UV filter for it. Both of my lenses are the same size, so I have one variable ND filter as well that I use for both lenses if I'm filming outside. So that way I can still use f2.8 when filming outside. I think if you're someone who really likes shallow depth of field, which that's something I play with a lot, you'll definitely want a UV filter so that way you can just manipulate the light that much more and have that room to go f2.8 or even lower if your lens allows it. This microphone was actually something that when it first came out, I immediately knew I wanted it. Like this was one of those, I am wise enough to see the value in this piece of gear. Gear, and that's the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I really love this microphone. It's been out for a while. They probably have a new iteration of it by now. But I really love the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus specifically because it turns on and off with the camera. That is like just that little function alone, game changer. <laughs> Even if I know I'm going to a location just to film B-roll, I still plug up my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus to the camera and have audio rolling. Because again, the gear itself enables you to have audio that is clear and crisp, so why not just have it rolling? That's also the editor in me as well, in post-production, having good ambient sound and just playing around with sound to evoke a mood or enhance the story. You just can never have enough audio in my book, so. Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, cannot recommend it enough. Back to filming. Oh, can y'all even see me? Yes, yeah, okay. Uh, we're in Brackenridge Park, by the way. I love being in this park because the trees here are epic. And I was Instagramming <laughs> for a second. I don't know, man, it's something about the trees here. They just are like, they're kind of creepy, but I like it, you know? <laughs> As much as I love going handheld with a lot of things that I do, and you can get a lot accomplished going handheld, especially with the stabilizing technology that's in Premiere Pro now, which I use to edit all of my videos, whether it be on here or for clients. Just having a tripod, good old sticks is really, you can't go wrong with that. I've had enough close calls dropping my camera off of a monopod that for the most part, I bring a tripod, especially because the way I'm starting to film a lot of my YouTube videos now is I'm usually sometimes up to 50, 100 feet away from the camera and am recording using my phone to control the camera. So I really need just solid sticks to put my camera on and know that I 
it won't fall over, you know, unless someone literally comes and pushes it. Aside from my tripod, another thing I keep in my bag is a little Manfrotto Pixie Pod. And I don't know what it is about these compared to the Gorilla Pods. I used to have a Gorilla Pod and used it a lot, but then something in me just kind of shifted and I didn't like using a Gorilla Pod anymore. Uh, if any of you have any insight as to why you think you know, some of us are moving away from Gorilla Pods, let me know because I really don't know why. I just didn't like it anymore. It was really weird. Now I have a little Manfrotto Pixie Pod. I throw it in my bag in the top and you'll be surprised how many times you can be out filming and you think of a good shot and you just need to raise the camera off the ground like six inches and not any higher. And most tripods can't really go that low easily. The other thing that's great about the Manfrotto Pixie Pod is to do the traditional vlogging style of walking and holding the camera. The Manfrotto Pixie Pod is great for that. Even day to day when I go to the office, this is all the stuff I just have with me all the time. A lot of times with my tripod, I'll just leave it in my car. Uh, I don't necessarily have it hooked to my backpack all the time, but it's in my car. Truly at a moment's notice, I can make a video. <laughs> with this gear. In the comments below, let me know what piece of gear, whether it's film related or anything else, that was a game changer for you. For me, it was getting the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter. I don't know, man, once I got that lens, once I really figured out what I was missing in my cinematography style and how the lenses I had were limiting me and I realized that that lens could fix it, it was night and day. I felt like my B-roll for clients just got so much better. My B-roll here on YouTube got so much better. And I just really thought differently about how I filmed sequences and how I told a story just with the visual picture. Also, shout out to my Patreon production team. If you're interested, patreon.com slash there you get early access to videos as well as private weekly vlogs from me where I talk about running the production company and everything I've got going on in the background. Otherwise, if you're new here, I'm Halise. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, so on and so forth, y'all know. And I'll see you when I see you.